I'm traveling back in time to give my younger, more naive self some comic book critiques. Hey, Walter here, and I was scanning through my old art file and I ran across this really old comic book and I was cringing looking at the artwork and all the mistakes I made and I was thinking like, man, I wish I could have gotten some feedback on this comic back when I drew it. It would have helped me improve a lot. Uh, so it got me to thinking like, why don't I just critique my own comic and maybe that will help some other people. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay, let's take a look at these pages for the rejects. I drew these pages back in 2008 and it was one of my first attempts at a real legit I want to make money comic. It's a eight page submission for Zuda, uh, which was a DC Comics webcomic platform back in the day. It was Webtoon before Webtoon. Every month they'd run a contest and the winner would get a contract to be a featured comic and get paid. Unfortunately, Zuda is no longer in existence, but it did produce some great comics and brought awareness for a lot of creators. Uh, there's a lot in these pages that I see that could be improved, you know, which makes sense. They are super old, and I know so much more now than I did 12 years ago. Uh, one of the big things is anatomy. However, Anatomy is a lifelong journey. We will always be learning and improving our anatomy skills for our entire career. If I could only choose one thing for a comic creator to work on, I would choose that they work on making a comic rather than practicing anatomy. And a lot of anatomy problems can be fixed just by using reference, either by searching on Google or taking your own photos. I'm super bad about using reference as well. That's something I need to improve and get better at. However, there are two aspects that are easy to grasp and implement in our comics now, and it doesn't really take that much practice. They are composition and color. Now don't get me wrong, composition and color can be insanely difficult to understand, but there are some basics that are super easy to understand and implement. So let's start with composition. When thumbnailing or sketching comic pages and panels, the first thing we should think about is where are the words going to go? And if we take a look at these lettered pages, it is obvious that I never asked this question. These pages were lettered uh, by Nate Frizzoli, who also happens to be the writer of the rejects. You can see Nate was struggling to find space for lettering. He had to letter outside the panels, scatter them around panels, and place them next to other panels lettering just to get them all in there. And usually we want to keep all the lettering at the top of the panel. It just makes it easier on the reader. They don't have to search around and possibly miss balloons. Like if you put them in the bottom left corner, the reader might not see it until it's too late. So let's re-thumbnail this first page. The first thing we're gonna ask is where is the lettering gonna go? And so we're gonna want it to go in the top panel. So we do this, we draw the panel out and then we draw all the word balloons in there. Now we know how much space we're working with. Another thing I've learned with more experience is that it's okay to change a script. Sure, talk to your writer or to yourself to make sure that it works with the story, but it is okay to make a script better and to change it. So with that in mind, I think a wall of TVs is a little flat, so why not make it a huge mega TV on the side of a building with people looking up at it? I think that's a lot more epic and a great way to start off a comic. Now if we look at these other panels, we can see that there is zero room for lettering. Now I'm not mad at this top panel, I enjoy the composition and the drooling kid if it wasn't a comic panel, but let's figure out what we can do to make it more of a comic panel composition. First I'd flip it. Now the composition and the perspective are moving in the same direction as the reader. It just helps the flow to move from left to right as much as possible. I'd also make the panel taller and then shorten the other panels below it. We don't really need to see that much leg in those panels. It doesn't serve any purpose. Now for the bottom panels, I'm going to be changing the camera angle. Here I have the character looking to the right. Again, keeping that flow of action moving with the reader. There is also a 180 degree rule in effect here. I made a video regarding this concept if you don't know the rule, so you can check that video out later. Now these three bottom panels are all drawn straight on. 
new artists tend to stick to the straight on or profile angles because it is what we're used to. That's what we've practiced learning how to draw. But using more angles creates depth and energy and emotion. So I'm going to turn the camera. And I'm also going to get rid of that little insert panel of the ear being flicked. It doesn't really do anything for me. Plus in the next panel, the character is going to be turning around and holding on to their ear. I think that's more than enough storytelling information for the reader to understand what happened. And then finally in the last panel, the character turns around and the bad guy gives a high five to his stupid friend. And also in all of these panels, I left room at the top, cut off the bottom useless stuff, and just made sure that there was gonna be place for the letterer to put some information. One other thing to notice across the whole comic is I use a lot of overlapping panels. Now this is supposed to make things dynamic, but it is super easy to confuse the reader if you don't do this correctly. So the bottom three panels at first glance could look like a single panel to the reader. However, if I separate them with a gutter, suddenly it's a lot easier to realize that those are three separate panels and a lot easier to read. This is why I've completely stopped using these dynamic panel layouts. It's just not a skill that I want to learn. There's other things I want to focus on. There's only so much time in the world, so just focus on what you think is important for you. If we take a look at the second page, here is a similar problem. I'm moving away from the traditional white gutter and opting for a more moody black gutter. However, it can be hard to identify individual panels, but if I make them white, suddenly it's a lot easier to see where the panels lay. Now, I'm not saying that you can't use black gutters, just think about the effects of using them. And you could also use white panel borders instead of black to help offset some of the negatives of using black gutters. Now let's check the composition for this page. Again, the dialogue space is really tight. I'm also using an angle that I now avoid like the plague, the overhead angle. It's a great angle because you can fit a lot of information in there. And when we're starting out and we don't feel comfortable with overlapping shapes and more complicated compositions, the overhead angle is usually a great solution. However, they tend to look really empty and flat unless you spend a lot of time on them. Lowering the angle is going to help add depth and also being able to draw foreground objects, which is going to help push back the mid and backgrounds. Also, you can use the foreground objects to block the reader's view effectively letting you draw less stuff, so that's a big bonus. So I'm gonna take my three overhead panels and lower the angle. I will also leave some headspace for dialogue. These panels now, I think they have more depth, and notice how the characters are overlapping with the background and each other, and the tree in panel one creates a nice amount of spatial depth with the building. All right, let's look at this bottom middle panel. Like, look at all that wasted space at the bottom. There's no reason for this panel to be a full body shot. So let's zoom in, see more of the situation, see what he's looking at, see his expression, see what he's holding. This is gonna be more immersive for the reader to feel like they're part of the story. Now the rest of the pages are gonna have these exact same problems, but I think we get the point. So let's move on to the other fix, which is colors. The biggest coloring problem with these pages is contrast. So contrast is the difference between two things. So if the image is a dark gray box next to a slightly less dark gray box, there's zero contrast. But if we lighten one of the boxes, suddenly we have tons of contrast. And it's not just value, it's also hue. Two blue colors next to each other aren't gonna have a lot of contrast, but if we put it next to a red box, all of a sudden there is more contrast. And using both hue and value together is gonna to create even more contrast. And you can create even more contrast by using saturation. Now if we wanna check the contrast with value, the black versus white, we can add a saturation layer and lower the color saturation down to nothing. It's gonna make everything gray. So if we look at this first panel, we can see that there isn't a ton of contrast in the image except for maybe the skin, but that, I don't think that really counts. So the quickest fix is just to lighten these boxes in the background. Now the characters are a lot easier to see. Of course, this is supposed to be a dark store in the middle of the night, so aren't those boxes too bright? Maybe in the real world, but this is comic, so clarity is queen. Also with dark scenes, we don't want to make the colors dark. We want them to feel dark. And we do that by making the colors cooler, 
which means just choosing colors that are closer to blues or purples. So let's change that reddish brown color and suddenly it feels a lot darker. However, the value, the level of black in the color isn't any darker, it's actually brighter. Now what if we do this for the foreground boxes and the ceiling? Now it really feels like nighttime, but also with a ton of contrast because the characters are more of the warm oranges and blues, but the rest of the panel is in purple. So there's that hue contrast as well. Application of the color is also important. Uh, for these pages, I used a painterly or airbrush technique. Now this method is super hard and really easy to mess up if you don't know what you're doing, which I didn't and still don't. It can make everything feel soft and shapeless if you do it wrong. So now I use a simple cell shading method, similar to anime. Not only is it simpler to understand and apply, it's quicker to do, which is really nice when you're trying to crank out comic book pages. So let me recolor some of this panel using my current method. I outlined this method in detail in another video if you're interested. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get my new base colors. You can see already that my color choices have gotten a little bit more poppy and a little bit more purple. The next thing we're going to want to do is add the shadows. You can see I'm choosing simple planes. I treat each part of the body as a simple cube and then select a plane as either in shadow or light. You can get a little bit fancy and then like let some light hit the nose or have the head cast shadow on the chest. Notice also that this shadow is purple, not black. That is really important to understand when adding shadows. You don't just paint black on top of the base color. You want to make the shadows cooler, meaning more towards blue or maybe purple if it's already blue. I tend to go towards pinks and fuchsias and purples regardless because that's just how I like things to look. So right now these shadows are just by adding black. It looks okay, but if we did this for the entire panel, it's gonna start looking a little muddy, a little boring. So let's make our shadows a little bit more purple. Instantly we get more pop, the shadows look darker, but they aren't actually any darker, there's just more contrast. So they're a lot more noticeable. Also they are cooler, which we learned early has that feeling of darkness, so the shadows feel more shadowy. One other quick thing I do is by adding some rim or bounce light, it helps define the shapes that are in the shadows. You don't really notice it as much when it's on, but when I turn them off, I definitely miss them. Another really cool thing with cell shading is that it's great for background abstract shapes, like those boxes. If I do some simple shading on those, all of a sudden there's form and depth where there was none before. To finish, let's take a look at this last page. There are so many problems here, but what I wanna do is I wanna talk about this last panel right here. So this is supposed to be a big turning point of the story. The kid has had enough and he's ready to live up to his full potential. But this panel is so tiny, it does not deliver on what it promises. So when you're composing a page, think about what panels are important and give those panels a little bit more emphasis. There you go, young Walter. I hope that helped. It would be super awesome if all of a sudden I started drawing with 12 years of new skills or do I already have those 12 years of new skills? I'm not really sure how time travel works. It's a little bit confusing. If you could travel back in time, what piece of advice would you give your younger self about making comic books? So this was pretty fun. I have a bunch of old comics, so I have a whole backlog of comics I could go through and do this. If you have any comics you would like me to take a look at, I would love to do that. Just send me a link to your comic pages. I don't know, anywhere from one to five comics, anything more than that, and it starts getting a little unwieldy. And I would prefer to focus more on comics versus like pinups, illustrations. Uh, covers or anything like that. If you want to help me making more videos, consider buying some of my comic books so you have something entertaining to read. Or you can support me on Patreon. I do monthly sketches for my backers and I do a monthly vlog where I can kind of give a behind the scenes on what it's like being a comic book creator and talking about the things that I'm currently going through. And of course, the easiest way to support this channel is by hitting that subscribe button or just sharing this video wherever you like to hang out and chill. Be sure to like, link, love, hug, and sub for more sweet, sweet goodness. Peace.